Hi, welcome to Lucy's Big Beautiful World of Painting. I'm so excited today because I have Janet Jackson from Brick, New Jersey um, as my guest instructor. Now Janet was my longtime student and now today I'm going to be her student. Janet is um, also a certified Wilson Bickford instructor. She's a, a one-stroke a level one certified instructor. I had the privilege of certifying her in uh, one stroke a few years back and she's also a uh, Grum Bacher certified. So today she's doing a nice little scene and I'm going to paint along with her while she teaches it. We have already put uh, Wilson Bickford's um, glazing medium on our black gessoed canvas and we're using a 16 by 20 today. So um, without further ado, I'm gonna let Janet get started. Thanks Lucy. What we're going to do today is a rendition of a Wilson Bickford forest scene, but I have to say too that I've uh, borrowed some techniques from some other artists. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is create a landline between the forest and the white land beneath it. And what we want to make sure is that when we do that, we don't have a line that breaks the canvas right in the middle which I almost did. But you want it a little bit higher or a little bit lower and you want in this case a slope. I'm using the fan brush. I'm going to get some weight on it and just load it back and forth and just put a line where you want your land to be. So that'll break up the forest from the land itself. Okay? All right, the next thing we're gonna do is take one of Wilson Bickford's texture brushes and I've mixed together sap green, Van Dyke brown, mm -hmm. and some uh, ultramarine blue. What we're gonna do is do a, a, a slip slap stroke, okay? So you said a Van, Van Dyke brown, right? sap green, Correct. and ultramarine. Right. So it should be kind of like a green blue color? A dark green, but you know, I've taught this uh, a lot of times. This one is a lot greener that mm -hmm. I have here. Okay. I actually like it when it has a little more blue in it. A little so, more blue. So it's up to you. Okay. If, if you like the green or you like the blue. I'm using his uh, Wilson Bickford's large texture brush. And okay. I'm just tapping it in here. And All right. And it's a sort of a slip slap, like an X stroke, okay? okay? like this. Mm -hmm. Now you won't be able to see it on the screen right uh, now. Yeah, I can't, yep. can't see it. But, but you wait a minute. You know it's there, right? You wait a minute and see what happens. And I'm, I'm doing this kind of a uh, X stroke all the way down. All the way down to the land. Okay, all the way down. Because what we're doing is indicating the forest. It's going to be very impressionistic, a very okay. impressionistic look, okay? So even though you can't see this on camera right now, in a few minutes, you'll be amazed at what we're going to see. Oh, I see. Okay. And should I leave some black spots showing? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so I'm just, okay. Uh, good. Okay. All right. When you're done with that, you can either get a clean brush or mm -hmm. you can wipe off the dirty brush that you have right now. Okay. I'm actually going to get a clean brush because I, I, okay. I, clean my, I don't like cleaning them. And put a little bit of white, titanium white, just on the corner Oop. of the brush. And I did the whole brush. I'm okay. going to just wipe that off a little bit. So pull it out. Okay. And what you're going to do now is just a swirling motion on your canvas on the top, okay? And just keep moving and swirling. Take a look at it, make sure that you okay. don't cover up all of your darks. And what this is going to be is an impressionistic background of a forest. Well, I can see that. Okay? Oh, I can already make see that sure, from Okay, make sure that you don't stay in the same place Make sure that you're going to blend. Make sure that you use, you uh, leave a lot of the darks because the okay. darks will be what gives you the depth. Now, this is a lot lighter than I would normally do it, but I want it to show up on, on camera, so I made it a little bit lighter than I normally would do. I, I, think, uh, I think it looks great already. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to lean out here and take a peek of yours. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, when you do this, and you decide that you've used too much light, 
what you can do is you can go back and pick up some of the colors that we originally used, the Van Dyke Brown, the Ultramarine, and um, the uh, Fat Green, mm -hmm. and you can put some of the dark colors back in again. Okay. okay. So this is probably one of the most time-consuming portions of the painting, only because you want to get this background correct. Okay. I think it looks great. Now, what you're going to do when you decide that you like the way it looks is take your brush and move uh, horizontally across the canvas to blend it. You could also use Wilson Bickford's blending brush to do that too. Okay. But I'm blending across right now, standing back to see if I like the way it looks. And did you wipe your brush off a little? I um, did not. You didn't? No. Nope. Okay, so you're just going back and forth yeah, a little? Yeah, just kissing the canvas okay. very so lightly. Very lightly, very just lightly. back and forth yeah. to blur it. Right. I see. Now I have too many strokes in here that okay. are too harsh. So, so you mean you're seeing like the lines from yes. the brush? Yes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going up and blending them a little bit more. Okay. Okay. Now, okay. as I said, if you want to put some more darks back in there, what you can do is pick up the color that you used before and put some darks back in there. And I think I may actually do that just to show you how you do it. So you mm -hmm. would take your brush again, go back into the brown, blue, and green, tap it out, and then you can come back up to your canvas and put some more darks in. Okay. Okay. So you do want dark Absolutely. Like, splotches. <laughs> yeah, because that shows, that gives you depth. Right. Okay. okay. Without uh, the uh, dark, you would have no depth in this. Okay. Well, I think I did pretty good. I think I have uh, some nice darks in there. Looks pretty nice so far, I think. Good. Okay. Good. All right. The next thing we're going to do, just so that we have blocked everything in, is take your fan brush mm -hmm. and load it with white. Okay. okay, and we're going to put the, sand, uh, the uh, snow in. Okay. Now you can see that the way I did it, I used a, a horizontal motion going downhill. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to, you could go straight across, but I like the way this looked, almost as, as driven snow yes. going down. Over so, a mountain. Like, yeah, yes. so use your um, fan okay. brush, load it up with white, and just scuff it along the landline. Okay. Now, you could also put blue in this. In this picture mm -hmm. here, I actually did the bottom of it with Wilson Bickford's blue gesso. Okay. Because you can get gesso in colors. Mm -hmm. So I did that to do the, uh, the blue, the okay. blue, which was the snow shadows. So then for today, we can do the white, and then we can always go back Absolutely. and put some blue Absolutely. on top. Right. So if we're we, going to be putting yep. a lot of white on right yep. now, right? Yep. Pretty much white. But you know, I like leaving some of the black show too. It's okay. personal preference. Okay, because I can see I have some black showing through. Yep. So just going back and forth into the white here and Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Now again, if, you're, uh, if your paint isn't moving, in this case what you can do is you can use the fast flow okay. medium. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's that uh, more liquid right, paint. Right, the white, white yeah, fast flow. from yeah. Wilson. And you can use that to mm -hmm. fill in. Have it move a little bit more. The um, snow. Okay. Great. This doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to go back in later if we have time mm -hmm. and we're going to do uh, some embellishment on it. Okay. okay. And I'm going all the way down to the yes, bottom. Yes. I'm going, see, I'm going all the way down. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. And I like the idea that when I um, let the brush run out of paint, yeah. then um, it, you know, it shows a little darker on the yep. bottom there. Then yep. when I put the fresh paint on, it's whiter. So that, that it's kind of making its own, its own uh, kind of slope on its own there without me doing much to it. Okay, so you're going to do all that. And as I say, you don't have to be neat with this because there's a lot going on later mm -hmm. with this bottom. Okay. Okay. All right. How you doing over Very there? Very good. Okay. Yeah. A lot, of, a lot of painting and a lot of white paint. Yeah. <laughs> and you can see... Um, if you step back from it, you can mm -hmm. see in your mind's eye that you already have a forest and you have a snowy embankment. Mm -hmm. It's coming to life. Yeah, I'm liking it. Very good. 
Right. Now, because we don't have a whole lot of time, what we're going to do is only put a few trees in today. Okay. You can put in as many as you want because it's your painting, but um, today we're just going to do some of the background trees, and then what we're going to do is a few of the foreground trees because I just want to show you how you highlight those, okay? Very good. How you doing? Done? Very good, yeah. Okay. All right. What we're going to do is take your script liner, mm -hmm. and as you know, when you use a script liner, you have to have it really wet. So you take your script liner, and what I did was I mixed it with a little bit of black and white because I actually liked the way these, these uh, trees looked in the background. Mm -hmm. I liked them lighter. Okay. So what I would do is take some black and some white and mix it up so that it almost runs off your, um, your brush like milk or ink. Okay, okay. so very, very liquidy, dipping Absolutely. back and forth into yep. the turpinoid. I'm just using yep. the turpinoid today. So it should be like a grayish color? Yes, that's the color I like. Now, okay. if you want another color, you could use that, but okay. it's the one I liked. Like a gray. Right. Now, also, when you use the script liner, the reservoir is in the ferrule, the ferrule being mm -hmm. the silver thing here. Mm -hmm. So you want to really hold your brush up like this mm -hmm. and then come from the snow and just make a, a sweeping line. It's almost a flicking line, though. Okay, so these are the background, background little trees these there, guys. That, not the... the uh, these. Showing. Yep, the background ones. Okay. And just kind of pull it all the way up. Right. Now, I see I can't even see mine, so I'm going to add a little more white and change right. my color. Okay. Because I can't see mine at all. Now, when you make these, the other thing that you have to remember is that they can't be like little soldiers. They can't right. be separated by one inch all the way across. So you want to be very generic with them. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. And make as many as you would like. Now, remember, okay. this is the background because we're going to have trees in front of it. So these will look like they're far in the background. Okay. And as I say, you use sort of a flicking motion, an upward motion when you do that. Okay. Now, can you come in the other direction? Can you go top down? Yeah, you can. But it's easier for me to go from bottom up. And I like this because it makes it look like they're fading out yes. into the darker yep. portion of, you know, of um, where you're going to be putting right. um, the, big the leaves. Yep. Yeah, and the leaves that I right. see that you have there. Okay. Okay. All right. This is fun. I kind of want to keep doing it, but I'll stop. <laughs> okay. You can also put on these, a couple of them, mm -hmm. put some branches on. Okay. okay. Branches are not easy to do. That could be a whole lesson in itself. Mm -hmm. You have to make sure when you do branches that they're long enough, that they're not straight, that okay. when you make them, you hold your brush down and have a, like a little wiggle, all right, and come out. Make sure they're long enough. Like Wilson says, don't make them look like T-Rex arms, <laughs> okay? And I remember, Janet, when you first came to me as a student, you did not like this brush, and that, you struggled that, with it. That must have been somebody else. Ah, I could have sworn oh, it was you. Okay. <laughs> and now, look, you're proficient at it. Yeah, I do enjoy making um, trees and branches, but they're not easy. No, you got to get the hang of it. Right. I know you're making it look look easy to everybody right now, that's for sure. Okay. Now, where we're putting these branches, what we're going to do on top of those is we're going to put some foliage. Now, of course, we've got um, snow. So, are they really deciduous trees? No. It's just green, mm -hmm. okay? It's impressionistic. So, you can make believe they're pine trees. You can make believe anything that they're anything you want. It's just we need some more green back there. Okay? Are you done with those trees? Yes, done. Okay. I just keep putting more while you're going on. Okay. <laughs> All right. So take, I'm taking the texture brush. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's the brush you like to use for this. Okay. But what I'm doing is I'm mixing sap green with a little bit of black and a little bit of blue. Okay. Sap green, black, and some a little blue. bit of blue. Right. Okay. And tap it open. Tap your bristles open. Tap. Okay. Yep. Tapped. And what you're going to do is just touch your canvas very lightly, again, moving your brush in a number of different directions so everything is not symmetrical. Now, does this have to be darker, this color, yeah. than the yeah, darkest absolutely. in the back? I would make it darker so that it darker. stands out. Okay. okay. And as I say, it's very impressionistic. It's not like, oh, that's an apple tree. Okay. It's just green. Right, right. And especially with their snow, there wouldn't really yeah, right. be exactly. green because exactly. of the snow. Exactly. Okay. All right. But uh, still, maybe maybe in certain parts of uh, the world there is. Who knows? 
I want you to some, check that out. That'll be a, greater, that'll be a project left. for you. Okay. <laughs> it's a research project. Right. Yeah. And just putting them here and there and Yeah. Yep, and some low, some high. You don't want to make you want to make sure they're not all symmetrical. You don't want a straight line across. Okay. Okay, so make some higher than lower. Oh, this is great. Very okay. good. All right, and some on this side. And then we'll move on. Okay. Okay. Very good. All right. So what I'm going to do is put some of the foreground trees in now. Okay. And um, in Wilson's painting, he had them two different colors. Mm -hmm. He had uh, four green, uh, foreground trees that were in black and some that were a little bit lighter. And I really liked the way that looked. A couple of times I've painted this and I've made them all the same and I really didn't like the way that looked. So what we're going to do is use your flat, number 10 flat brush okay. uh, and fill it with black. All right. Okay. Oh, and I just went into purple that I had left on there, so I'm just going to swish mine out. Okay. And I like to do, um, when I'm painting with dark colors, a lot of times what I do is what I call the little finger test, where if you take your um, finger and you move a little of the dark color over, so I'm going to move over a little bit of purple, then a little bit of black, and what I'm doing is I'm going in some white with my finger and mixing it in to the purple. Then I'll take another finger there, some white, and mix it in with the black. This way I can see which is the purple and which is the black. So I won't do what I just did by, you know, rather than going in the black, I went right into purple that I had left over on my palette. So that's just a little test, which sometimes I do with my students when we're using a lot of browns and blacks right. in, a, uh, in a class, just so we don't uh, have to take the time there and, you know, wash out a brush again. So I'm actually moving some of my paint over so it's right in front of me now. Well, we have a messy palette here because yes. I've, uh, I was using this before. Yeah, because we're busy for... painters, so. Okay, what you're going to do mm -hmm. is I'm going to put, even though these don't look black, I'm going to make these guys black. So I'm using the number 10 on the chisel. Okay. Okay, the chisel being, as you know, this portion of it. Right. And I'm dr dragging it straight down. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. Mine is as straight as a telephone pole. You don't want it to be that way. You okay. want it to be more generic, you want a little crick in it here and there, okay, so it looks like a real tree instead of a growing telephone pole. As you move the brush down, push harder on the brush, because when you do that, it has a tendency to splay out and it makes the bottom of the tree wider than the top, which is what you want. Okay, okay? very good. All right, now what I'm going to do is move, lay in some of these brown trees in the back. So I would wipe off your brush. Yeah, I see. I'm picking up some some of the white. Yep. Now, the uh, the brown trees that you said you're, using, you're not using brown paint. Are you still using the black, or did you go? No, with, uh, I used brown. You went into the yeah, brown. So used, now we're going into yep. the Van Dyke brown, right. same brush. Yep. yep. Okay. I wiped the brush off a little in the paint cleaner. Okay. okay. And what I did was I just moved, made some of these background trees. Okay. Now, we don't have to make quite as many today. Okay. But, and again, mine are too straight. Um, what you want to do is, mm -hmm. these are more background trees, so don't bring them all the way down like these, the foreground okay, trees so are. Okay, so a little bit further. Right. Yeah, I see, into right. the back of the snow. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm picking up quite a bit of white, so I'm going to have to go back and forth a couple times yeah, to try right. to get them in there. Could always tap some white over the bottom later. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. We're going to do that because we uh, don't want them to look like they're just sitting there. And I know that when we do trees and other elements in a painting, we do try to um, do an uneven amount of trees. Right. So I'm looking at my trees right now. I have the one black one, and I have, I'm going to put uh, four of the brown, and then this way they kind of, uh, you know, have the uneven amount and are different colors. Okay, what's, may, are you done with those? I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. Ready what's making me a little crazy here right now <laughs> is uh, th how these trees are just sitting here. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is take some white. I'm going to have to clean out my fan brush because it's got brown on it. Take some white, chisel up your brush, and what I would do is just go back and forth, okay, underneath them so they don't look like they're, uh, just sitting on top of the snow. Okay. Okay. Very good. I mean, we're going to fix it later, but there's sometimes things just 
I have to fix now. And I see I just didn't wipe my brush out yeah. good enough there, and I got some some light color in there. Yeah, but well, we can fix that. You know, for the sake of time, we're going to yeah. start putting on those um, those highlights on the trees, right. just so we can yep. show that lesson on how you're doing it, okay. and then we can work on it a little more after. Okay. So we'll start putting on the highlights. I see uh, you're using a um, a knife for that. Huh? I am. I'm Good. using my palette knife. And in this case, I don't have my glasses on. Let me see what size palette knife this is. <laughs> this is a small painting small, knife. Yep, yes. Wilson Bigford small knife. All right. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to make these sort of brown. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I would mix some white and some brown together and okay. make it a light color, a light color brown. Okay. All right. We're mixing with our with our knife right Absolutely. on the palette. Absolutely. And yep. you're going to make it. You're going to do a marble mix. Marble. Um, okay. A marble mix is not completely mixed up. That's perfect. So this would That's be perfect. like this. I'm not totally mixing it. Exactly. It looks like a marble color. Okay. okay. So here's our marble okay. color. Here. And what you're going to do is lay it out flat. Okay. Pull it towards you. Get a little bead of paint on your knife. Mm -hmm. And what you're going to do is just tap down the trees. Okay. okay. It's not a pull. It's a tap and a pull. Okay. So just tap and pull down those trees okay. to make that highlight. I'm going to start in the middle just in case more comes off. Okay. So tap and pull. Tap and pull. Right. Yep. Okay. Boy, what a difference. Really makes it uh, look rounder and yep. all already. Okay. Okay. And what we're going to do is do other colors in here because you can put more white more black, mm -hmm. anything to make it look more rounded, more natural, okay? And I'm holding my knife, since I'm coming from the top down, I'm actually holding my knife like upside down this way. Oh, okay. And are you, you're holding yours a little different, I yeah, see. Yeah, no, I hold mine this way. Okay. Yeah. See, so it's either way, whatever anybody can uh, get comfortable with to get that stroke in there. It's always, uh, that's how we learn from each other. That's how artists learn from each other. Everybody. That's how uh, the students learn and, and the artists themselves. So you're, what you're going to do is tap, and they're almost lines all the way across the tree, okay? okay. But it, they're not so definitive that you say, oh, that's a line. Mm -hmm. What you want to do is bring it up, tap it, and have them blend together a little bit. And that looks like a natural tree, mm -hmm. okay? Now, we're going to do that on all the trees. Some of them are going to have more white. Some of them are going to have more brown. Some of them are going to have more black. What, what I tell my students is just play with it. When you get home, play with those trees until you're happy with them. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to do maybe one more. Okay. okay. Again, the marbleized paint. I'm going to tap and pull. Mm -hmm. Okay. Have the paint break. Very tap good. and pull, tap and pull. Now, you're still using the marbleized I paint. I am. I am. And you said you were going to add another color. I was going to add some black into it. Some some black, just plain black? I was going to use my script liner and okay. go in other places and just add a little bit of black in okay. there. And, and that's, that's probably not 100% necessary, right? Oh, that's it's just more of an embellishment. It's not, at this it's just point. an embellishment. Because I'm looking at my trees yeah. and I'm saying, wow, they, they look pretty good. Uh, well, just as they are. Yeah. See, I can't see here, so I don't I know, know what I would say to you. And that's okay. You'll be surprised when the show is over. <laughs> I might say you need some black in there. Uh-huh. You yeah. might. <laughs> Very okay. good. Okay. And I'll do one more, one in the back. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we'll move on because I think we're uh, yeah, we getting have, a little we bit a, low on time. Yeah. About five yeah. minutes left oh, to get yeah. this nice we, painting okay. finished. And I think everybody uh, that's watching is getting the idea of yeah. it, so they will take their time. And, right. And the best thing I always suggest is to watch the whole half-hour show straight through. And when the whole half-hour show is watched, then you're like, oh, I get it now. And then you get your supplies out and get everything set up and then watch the show again and paint along. I think it's always better if you watch the whole thing first because otherwise you're looking at it and it's, it's hard to envision <laughs> what's going to be going on to get to that point. Okay, let's go back to the snow. What I would do is take your um, fan brush. I actually put some of the Wilson Bickford Fast Flow on here mm -hmm. and went into my blue, the ultramarine blue. Okay. And 
made it very light. And then I'm just scuffing along like I did before, okay? Just scuffing and covering up some of those black lines that we had, okay? Mm -hmm. Then you can go back and load more white on it. Right. There, there is no rhyme nor reason to this. There are no like, do it two times, do it three times. You just stand back from it. And as uh, you know, there is a lot of purple on that. As mm -hmm. you know, um, the best way to view a painting is from six feet away. Right. So you have to lean back from it and take a look. And now I that, see this blue really is making the shadows really yeah. stand out nice. And what I'll have to do is fix this purple, but everything is fixable. That's why I tell my students when they go, oh, I ruined it. <laughs> everything is fixable. Hey, I just got some green in there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It happens. It yeah. happens. I teach in acrylics, so it's a lot easier not to get this kind of issue because acrylics dry so fast right. with oils. They blend so beautifully, which I wish acrylics would do, but you have to be careful because in that case, I just got that big purple spot. And now, okay. what you can do, <laughs> I mean, as a, uh, what I can do is I could do, take a towel and wipe that off, or you actually brought a, a, yes. a, 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 I a, I brought a racer, tool. right? This but is see, the, this, uh, you can take it off with this. Yeah, this or Wilson. Tool we use yeah. just to scrape if we right. had to. Right, right. So see, nothing is broken. Nope. Nope. Very good. Okay. Okay. So now I see that you have a few highlights on your tree with some white there. I do. Those were uh, branches that I had put on like okay. I did in the back. So if we have time, we could do yeah, that. Yeah, we have a couple minutes left. Okay. I'd love to put a couple highlights All right. on. I could see my trees can use a little bit of highlight. Okay. So Take do you your... use straight white there? I, no, I used uh, the black. Okay. I used black with a uh, script liner brush. Oh, to put the white on? I used it to make the, the branches first. Okay, okay. And then after that, I used a script liner to put the white, the snow on it, okay? I see, okay. So I used the script liner, if I can find it. Yeah, and we, have, I, we have another minute just to get a couple yeah, of those in, but at least we can just, show. Just put some branches in. Okay, some white okay. branches. No, black branches. Oh, sorry. And then you go over top of that with the white, which indicates oh, the snow. Oh, okay. I got you okay. now. So, because I have a little bit of gray here, so. Okay. That would work too. I see. So after okay. you put some of those, and then you go back and right. you would put some white on top, yep. so it looks like the snow is absolutely on top of it. I see. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just going to move a little over to the side here so everybody can see. Right. I see exactly. So if I happen to have some gray on there and I put a nice gray branch in, which probably won't show too much, but I'll go back and make that lighter without even washing the brush and just put a little bit of the white on top. So right. So I would probably go back and, and you, you can put see a few I have more. it. Yeah, I have it in a number of trees. Okay, yes. and additionally, this tree you can see is so much different than the others because it looks like it's fallen down. Yes, and you can do that too. Okay, very good. And yeah. I see in mine, I probably would bring a few more down. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, but for the sake of time today, I think that this is a you know wonderful lesson for for what we got in in, in this amount of time. And um, I appreciate that you came, Janet. Oh, to, thank you. To, to thank teach you very us much. this lesson. Thank and you. I hope to have a, have you back again sometime. And We'll go ahead and do a little last minute fixes and uh, look us up online, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you.